Hey everybody, if you don't know me, my name is Ron Cantor. I am a citizen of the state of Israel. I'm also a citizen of the United States of America. And I wanna share something that happened to me several months ago that I think is very relevant today. And there's a reason I'm sharing it today as opposed to before. And the reason is this. Uh, well, let me just start from the beginning. Uh, back in late August, I was uh, in Israel. I was driving on my way to a meeting. And I have to say this this year, um, I, I don't fashion myself a prophet. Uh, I don't ask God about world events, what's going to happen, who can I, t I don't want to be that person. I honestly just hear my heart. That is not my desire. I love to preach and teach the word. I love to evangelize, I love to share my faith. Um, but this year has been very, very strange for me. Um, first with the, the coronavirus, then the, the U.S. elections, and then something happened um, back in late August where I was just, again, minding my own business. And uh, I felt the Lord begin to speak to me. And, and these are the words I heard, uh, something akin to uh, about Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, I felt the Lord said, I'm moving on from him because he has begun to uh, put his own affairs and his family ahead of the interest of the state of Israel. And I remember hearing that and, and feeling a very strong witness of the Holy Spirit, or what I felt was the Holy Spirit, and taking note, I wrote it down, went to my meeting. Now, I want to be clear also about something else. If I give a prophetic word, I'm not infallible. I'm not saying you have to believe me. I'm just seeking to be obedient. If you want to think I'm a false prophet, that's fine. I'm not going to get offended. If you want to think that I miss God, that's also, I am simply trying to do my duty. I'm trying to walk with God, follow God, step by step. I'm submitted to leadership. So what I'm sharing today, I'm submitting to you. The Bible says, test prophecy, hold on to that, which is good. I think this is good, but maybe you won't. And that's okay. Uh, you'll never hear me telling you that if you don't trust me as a prophet, uh, that God is going to judge you. That's not what New Testament prophets do. And I'm never going to do that. I'm just delivering information that I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to. You do with it what you feel God is telling you to do. So as I heard this, I thought, oh, and that's all I heard. I said, well, wh what do I do with that? You know, do, do, I, do I share that publicly? Do I, um, do I pray? Do I, I really honestly, a couple months go by and I'm, I'm still thinking about this. Shared it with my wife. I shared it with about 20 uh, leader friends of mine. Uh, including Dr. Michael Brown, Ward Simpson, Asher Intrader, Dan Juster, uh, Eitan Shishkov, Paul Wilber, uh, friends that are very close to me, but I never knew what to do with this. I never had a sense, you know, I just, I kept asking God, what do I, and silence, you know, after even the U.S. election with all that craziness, I said, Lord, any, 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 and silence. I never heard anything. And, um, I never knew what to do with it. And so uh, about two weeks ago, I was getting ready to preach in uh, Mississippi. And as I was preparing, I suddenly felt the Lord say, I want you to share about the prophecy about Netanyahu. And when I say, just so you know, when I hear the voice of the Lord, it's more impressions with a, a strong witness in my spirit. You know, you, 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 if you're a prophetic pe preacher, you know when you're sharing something that's close to the heart of God. And, um, and you know when you're experiencing God, there's just a, but even that, I'm always, I'm submitting that to others because we hear in a group, we know in part, we prophesy in part, we look through a glass darkly. But I felt like the Lord said, I want you to share that this morning as part of your message. So I did that. I, I inserted it, it. And honestly, I'm a little, I, I'm scared when I do things like that. Why? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to look like a fool. I don't want to come back two months from now and, and it doesn't happen. And by the way, when I heard that back in late August, it may have been early September, I, I can't remember. When I heard that about Prime Minister Netanyahu, I knew it would not happen the next day, but I knew it would not happen two years. It was in my sense was about six months, maybe a little bit longer, which is exactly where we are today in March, or rather where we may, uh, a little bit more than six months, uh, May of 2000, 
21. And, and there's been a process playing out in Israel since the elections in late March. Okay, so uh, I felt like the Lord shared with me on uh, a couple of weeks ago to share it publicly. It's the first time I've done that. And, and the reason I never shared it publicly, in addition to the sense that I didn't have a witness from God, was I believe prophecy has to be redemptive. There has to be a redemptive purpose. You don't just share to share. You don't predict the future to impress people. You're not a fortune teller. When prophecy comes, there's a reason for it. David got a word that he was going to be king one day so that when he was running from Saul for over a decade, he held on to that word. There's a reason for prophecy. Joseph had a word for Pharaoh about the famine coming, and there was a redemptive purpose so that they could harvest the grain and save some so they could save the world in the future. And I couldn't see any redemptive purpose other than impressing people. That's a magic trick. I'm not interested in that. And then something happened yesterday morning. I finally, (laughs) after many months, saw the redemptive purpose in this word. I was um, sharing two nights ago on Facebook, not as a prophetic voice, but as a a reporter, what's happening in Israel. And here's what's happening in Israel. The, the, The mandate for Benjamin Netanyahu to form a government after these unprecedented fourth elections in two years, he's been unable to form a lasting coalition. Well, any coalition except for the one last year and it fell apart. And so he had three weeks to form a coalition. He couldn't do it. And midnight, two nights ago, he had to return that mandate back to the president of Israel. And then the expectation, and and then it did happen this way, he would then turn to Yair Lapid to try and form a government. If he forms a government, obviously Netanyahu would no longer be prime minister. Would it be the end of the Netanyahu era? I don't know. But something happened in the midst of that, I'm just sharing the news, that I didn't realize it till the next morning, but something happened. Somebody, right at the end of the broadcast, as I like to do, I wanted just to greet people, you know, people watching from all over the world. And as soon as I put on my reading glasses and looked at the screen, a very bold message jumped out at me. I'm gonna read it to you. I had to take a break and get my phone. Uh, But here was the comment that was shared. Israel has been disgraceful for the handling of the experimental jab, the vaccine, and the green passport. She lost my respect for the nation. She meaning Israel. Israel has lost my respect. And I, I reacted to that. I was upset about that because the person wrote that has no idea what they're talking about. They don't live in Israel. They have the only knowledge they have is maybe little bits and pieces for the most part. And and again, forget what you think about the vaccine. Israelis are very happy. They're happy. 90% of Israelis are happy with the way things have gone with the, with the, the rolling out of the vaccine. It's open. The airport is open. The society is open more than any nation in the world. uh, I think people are going to restaurants. They're, They're now opening up sporting events fully to those who've been vaccinated. And even the restrictions on those who haven't been vaccinated are coming down day after day. You know what else is coming down? Coronavirus infections. Uh, back on January 27th, there were 12,000. Just a few days ago, there were 13. That, that's a 99.9% reduction. That's a fact. That, that you know, again, I, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to tell you uh, what I think about the vaccine. But I will report to you a fact. And I got upset and I saw that and I responded to it because, you know, Israel is the apple of God's eye. And if you watch our our, uh, our videos, I told you that in, in Hebrew, that word apple, it doesn't really mean apple, it means pupil. And they translated it apple because of the English idiom apple of an eye. But it really means Israel's the pupil, the center of God's eye. And when you touch Israel, it's like poking God in the eye. So you, you, you be, better be careful. But yesterday morning, as I woke up and I was praying, I was thinking about it, I, it was like, there's the redemptive purpose. Now, I, after you know six, seven months, I finally realized why God shared this information with me. Is because what's going to happen, and I've seen this, there's a spirit of anti-Semitism that I've seen enter into evangelical believers. I heard 
I've heard pastors of mega churches come out and basically compare Israel to Nazis because of the vaccine. And what I felt the Holy Spirit said to me yesterday is that, it, assuming that Netanyahu is, is, is done, or at least done now for prime minister, which is what I heard back in September, when he's removed, people are gonna say that God judged him because of the vaccine. And I want you to tell them that is not why he was removed because the Lord spoke to me back in, t- in September before we knew there was a coming vaccine, at least this quickly, or before we knew about a green passport, before we knew that Israel was going to lead the world in vaccination and coronavirus was going to, at least as of today, all but disappear. Before all, th- before all that happened, the Lord said, no, I'm removing him because he's put his own agenda, his court case, his trials, his family, and I won't go into the issues there, but he's put all that before the nation. Because of that, I'm, re- I'm gonna remove him as prime minister. That's what I felt the Holy Spirit said to me, but then yesterday he said, people are gonna, and you watch, you watch. If he's removed, people will say, God's judging him because of the vaccine, but now I know why I heard that word, to say no, that is not why he was removed. Now, you can have your opinions about the vaccine, but I am fairly confident in what I'm sharing with you today. You test it. You pray about it. But there is a warning here. I do believe that the enemy is going to seek to use the vaccine issue to turn evangelical uh, uh, believers against Israel. I have already seen it. Again, I've seen comparisons to Nazis. This woman, who I think was very pro-Israel, saying, I have lost all respect for Israel because of the green passport. It's actually called the Tavio the green pass, not passport, but uh, because of the, uh, the vaccination drive, all that stuff. I, I just, be careful, be careful. I'm not, listen, I'm not one of those people that, that is afraid to criticize my government. You ever heard of Shilano TV? You know, I, I, I lead a Hebrew speaking television network preaching the good news of Yeshua in Israel and they shut us down. I was not quiet. I was very willing to speak against my government, but always with honor and respect. But on issues that aren't clear in scripture, I'm a Romans 13 guy. You know, you want me to wear a mask? I wear a mask. You know, I, I, I want to make life easy for them. But when it comes to the gospel, I'm not going to compromise. Here's the warning. Do not listen to voices who seek to turn you against Israel because of the vaccine. I believe that the Lord raised up Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe he's one of the greatest statesmen, politicians in world history. I honor him. I love him. I pray for him. I bless him. But I believe that he, it, the nine lives have, have run out. And that I do believe there'll be a new government without him. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It's okay. My faith will not be, like I said, I don't fashion myself a prophet. I just want to preach Yeshua to my people and to the nations. That's my passion, teaching, preaching the word of God. But I'm seeking to be obedient here. And like I said, I'm submitted to leaders around me, seek to hear together. And that's pretty much all I have to share today. Again, the warning is this. If you hear people say, God is judging Israel, God is judging Bibi Netanyahu because of the vaccine, reject that. That's the prophetic word. Reject that because if you receive that, it can turn your heart against God's people. And here's the thing. God needs, needs, it's a strong word, you know. (laughs) God, God, God has set things up where it will be the prayers of millions of believers who love Israel, who are passionate for her salvation. That's what's going to bring revival to Israel. I was on a phone call the other day with a major prophetic voice in America, and he said, we were with with a group of Israeli evangelists, and he said that God has been dealing with him, and he knows that the latter part of his life is to be devoted to the salvation of Israel. And I believe God's going to speak that to believers all over the world. Because God's creating that womb of intercession to birth revival in Israel. And that revival in Israel is connected to the salvation of the world, to the greater riches revival that will take place in the nations, Romans 11, verse 12. Life from the dead, Romans 11, 15. None of that can happen without an awakening in Israel. And the enemy knows that. So what he's going to seek to do 
is turn belief. Again, I saw pro-Israel evangelical leaders. One was actually a Jewish pastor comparing Netanyahu and the Israeli government to Nazis just a few weeks ago. Be careful. God is raising up prayer for the salvation of Israel. It doesn't mean you never disagree with Israel. It means that even in disagreement, you say, I'm interceding, I'm praying, I'm going after God because I know this is part of God's plan. And the enemy is going to seek to turn people against her. And that's true whether the pre prophetic word about Netanyahu is true or not. That is truth that God is raising up watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem from all over the world that are going to be passionate, fasting, and praying for the salvation of Israel. And the enemy is going to look for any way he can to stop that. And one way is to sow seeds of discord by getting people to believe that God has judged Bibi and the Israeli government because of the green pass and the vaccination. So that's about it. God bless you. We love you. And we will talk to you soon. Shalom.